Good morning, Trinity Baptist Church. Happy Saturday. This weekend I'm recording my last uh, video from New Jersey, last Philippians video today, and last sermon tomorrow from out in the field, and uh, packing up the camera. I really had my tripod dialed in, but I'm packing it all up, and we are moving to Washington this week, which I am thrilled about. Let's finish Philippians together this morning. I'm going to end with Philippians 4. Uh, we stopped in verse 9, so we'll read verse 10 through 23. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in, in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was a kind of you to share my trouble. And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your credit. I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent, a fragrant offering, a sacrifice acceptable and pleasing to God. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. There's a oft-quoted verse in this uh, passage. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I think most of us uh, who grew up in the church have probably misapplied this verse one time or another. My most egregious example, I remember I was in sixth grade at, at Maywood Middle School, and we were supposed to run around the track I don't know, we were given an, an amount of time, and if you wanted to get an A for the day, you had to run around the track seven times. And I thought, you want me to run one and three quarters miles? That's impossible. The human body cannot do that. Um, I was not a fast child, and I remember on lap six, you know, coming around the first turn, so I had, I had three turns left to get an A for the day, I remember saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Um, but I don't know that this verse means um, that I could run seven laps in the time given. I, I know that I, I can't just pick a thing and say I can do it because I'm in Christ. I can't dunk. Um, and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to at this point. I'm letting that dream die. I, I think to, to read it that way, to say I can do anything because I'm in Christ, is, is to misunderstand what Paul's saying. He's talking about the secret of contentment that he has discovered. I don't think it means I can do anything in Christ. I think it means anything that I do, I can do as if I weren't in Christ, or I can do knowing that I am in Christ, Christ who strengthens me. I can wash the dishes in Christ. I can call a friend in Christ. I can, yes, pray and read the Bible in Christ. I can take out the trash in Christ. I can go through my workday in Christ. And that, I think, is the secret Paul has discovered to contentment in, in plenty, in hunger, in abundance, and need, in any circumstance, to remember and to live in Christ. And that is my hope for you until I see you face to face, um, that you would do all things in Christ who strengthens us.